Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about ro road noise reduction, a popular search term for noise issues. Road is a common uh, thing we get with noise in, in our room forums. People are always calling saying, how do I stop the road noise? And another one is in shared walls with condos and apartments. Those are real hard. So road noise is, is hard enough, but the shared walls is, is even more difficult. So how do we reduce noise? Well, let's first talk about noise transmission, the definition. If you're in a room, it's the sound leaving the room bothering others. If you're not in the room, it's the outside sound coming into the room bothering you. So road noise is one path of that. There's also room noise that leaves. So comes in and it goes. Those are the two ways that it works. How do we reduce noise transmission? We build a barrier, which is a structure between the source of the noise, let's use road noise as our example, and the receiver, us, let's say bedroom. So we're trying to sleep, trucks and everything are going by outside. So that's noise transmission. The barrier material and design is frequency and amplitude dependent. What does that mean? You must measure the noise. We must know the frequency, where it's at in the frequency range. We must know how big it is or how strong it is. That's the amplitude. So frequency and amplitude are two very critical elements. The reason for this is because to simplify things, I've broken it down into two major parts. If your road noise or any kind of noise transmission issue is below 125 hertz, it's a completely different barrier design not even close to this. This is that double wall glue stuff nonsense, 10 inches of space. It doesn't do anything for low frequencies. I get calls every day from people that have built that into their theaters. And I'm like, well, why are you calling me? Well, because my wife can't stand the bass coming through the walls. Well, you built something, but you built it wrong. See, you didn't measure. And this is that double wall green glue nonsense, it's nonsense for low frequencies, okay? You gotta measure the noise over seven days. Why? Because we're after mins and maxes in physics. We wanna know the loudest part of each day because that's what we have to design the barrier for. We wouldn't design the barrier for the quietest part of each day, right? We would design it for the loudest part of each day. That's called maximum pressure. And then minimum pressures would fall in that design, right? We have a process. We send you apps. You download them on your phone. On your phone. You download them on your phone. You fill out our online form with the data. It's very easy. We've done 1,400 of these. And then we issue you a barrier drawing after I run the numbers and get the analysis. I look at the mids and the maxes over the seven days. I look at the frequency and amplitude and then we generate a drawing. Barrier design, you can build it or give it to a contractor. Now let me give you a word of caution here. Because I was a contractor, I was a real estate developer. Don't use this word. Don't use the word acoustic when you're bidding the job. Because contractors don't know what that means. They think it means some exotic construction methodology or some exotic material types or both. Neither are true. They've been brainwashed into believing it is. It's not. All our technologies are standard construction material types, standard construction methodologies. There's no need for, you know, exotic things. But the contractors have been led to believe that when they see the word acoustic, and I see this in bids on jobs all the time, it's an automatic 25% increase in price for a couple reasons. They don't know what they're getting into. And they, the last thing you want to do on any job is bid it and lose money because it takes longer than you think or it needs more materials than you think. So stay away from this word acoustic. You're building a listing room. You're building this. You're building that. doesn't make any difference. Just stay away from the word acoustic. They see this word, they're going to add money to the project. The barrier design is a ratio of outside and inside noise give you a really good example. We just finished a project. Los Angeles. A lot of engineers been in the business 10 years. They get a hit. They make some money. First thing they do is they buy a house. 
with a two or three car garage. And the two or three car garage is going to be the studio because the cars can sit outside in Los Angeles. It's pretty, t you know, mild weather. So that's the first thing they do. That's great. But the problem is they like to work at two o'clock in the morning, mixing it 90, 95 dB SPL at two o'clock in the morning. And guess what? On both sides of the house, neighbors, six feet away. Not good. So we got to make sure that we get the right barrier so they can work. And the noise levels in the neighborhood we've measured were 45 dB SPL, and he's going to produce 100 minimum dB SPL inside that room at 2 o'clock in the morning. It's 55, 60 dB swing. Huge. The bigger the swing, ratio, outside to inside, the bigger the swing, the thicker the wall. That's just the way it goes. It's just physics, okay? With noise, you got to measure twice, cut once, the old carpenter adage, because you don't want to make any mistakes. You don't want to spend one dollar more than you have to with noise. You're never going to get it back. It's a permanent construction build. If you own the building, great. Will it increase value to have a quiet room? Probably not. The appraiser won't know what to do with it. It's like swimming pools, okay? Spend $30,000 on a swimming pool and get seven or 8000 on appraised value. Where's the justice in that? You got to have a lot of utility to make up for $20,000 difference. Same with noise. You don't want to spend $1 more than you have to. And you got to measure. Because here's the thing with barrier technology. You build what you think you, you're, is right without measuring. You're going to guess. 95% of the time, you'll guess wrong. And you'll call me and you say it didn't work. I said, well, I could have told you that before you started. What do I do? 80% of the time, we got to tear it out and start over. Think about that. Think about the cost of mistakes. Our design fees run to around 2000 for noise. I guarantee you that 2000 will save you more than 2000 in mistakes when it comes to noise transmission. Treatment's a little bit different. Noise isn't. Treatment, we hang more on panels on walls. We set units on the floor. We can put and choose, subtract and add at our, at our leisure to tune the room. You can't with noise because it's built in. It's structural. So you got to get it right. If you don't get it right, you're going to have to tear it out. And who wants to do that? Most don't. They just live with it. I've had people get divorced or move because of it. You got to be careful with noise, especially today because municipalities and governments, state and federal, have classified noise as a health issue. We'll be very, very careful because they put limits on pressure. And they put time frames. If you're producing X amount of dB SPL over a certain time frame, you're in trouble. OSHA will really come down on you if you're a business. And you have liability. Be careful there, too. So road noise reduction, not easy, but not so difficult with a few processes we can't fix. I really hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.